this is Jane Lowe and I'm at the uh, Shangri-La Hotel at the Digital Transformation Summit here in Singapore. And with me, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Nirupam SD, who yeah. is a senior scientist and also the head of IoT and Artificial Intelligence with the Energy Research Institute at okay. NTU, which is the National Technology University of Singapore here. Correct. And you just shared earlier in, a, in your presentation about combinatorial digital transformation. Now, those are very, very big words. So today's session is really about uh, what you mean by that and what are the kind of uh, practical applications that we see in everyday lives and what it means for a lot of our audience. Yeah, the combinatorial digital innovation is a practice of uh, using the, the components of different technologies and the trends to uncover value. In the smartphone, you see the there are many technology inventions put all together. You know, uh, technologies like uh, communications, memory storage, processor, which are very earlier inventions. And uh, with the top of the the emerging technologies like uh, touch screen technologies and the communication uh, multi protocol and uh, interoperable communications put together this uh, smartphone and. Uh, the moment you leave your room, you need only mobile phone to guide you for all your activities in the day. So that is the beauty of this uh, device. And uh, this device with the mobile phone, you are able to speak and talk to anyone across the globe. Right? And uh, in this phone now, the global internet penetration rate increased 5.18 billion uh, uh, users. And the internet penetration rate increased from you know 8% to 63% today, which means there is a 20x. And the data consumption, the price of the data consumption is dramatically down. In Singapore, in my experience, 10 years back, I pay $50 for 10 GB of data. Today, I am paying only $8 for 100 GB of data. So that is the beauty of uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, digital transformation. So the, the digital transformation enable for uh, last mile citizen to you know uh, bring into the formal and uh, online and cash economy systems from your utility paying and transportation, your you know all the daily needs. So it's a very paradigm shift, we can say. Mm. So basically, combinatorial uh, innovation, yeah. yes. as you put it, is really combining various types of technology. Yeah. Uh, so in the smartphone example, you talk mm. about the camera technology, the uh, smart touch uh, technologies, touch actor, yeah. mm. um, the communication, the yeah. data, yeah. all together, put together in this uh, device. Point. Yeah. And it's available to people around yes. the world. Yes. And yes. that is the explosive and acceleration yes. Uh, yes. aspect of yes. this uh, yeah. Uh, innovation. Yeah. Yeah. One billion people who are able to afford this technology and services 10 years before. Now, uh, almost all, the out of 8 billion people, um, 7.48 billion people are connected. Mm. Right? Because the data is affordable, Mm. and also the technology is affordable. Mm, so there is mm. an inclusiveness. Right, right, yeah. okay. Mm. So it's also about uh, the acceleration of the technological advances in semiconductor chips, I guess, uh, that enable yeah. data yeah. to be processed uh, true, quicker, true. cheaper, yeah. and can be stored yeah. at mass uh, volumes uh, for yeah. at a cheaper rate. True, so true. all this come together yeah. and yeah. sort of... And uh, digital transformation also is uh, very... You know, effectively transform the sector like uh, <coughs> industry process control, manufacturing, and also the automation industries, right? So you see the four generation of technology. In the first generation, the steam power. Mm -hmm. The second generation is the electrical power. The third generation is the robotics. The, the question is how you can bring the life to these robots so that they, they can uh, perform like you, augment the intelligence. That's where the Industry 4.0 come into picture. Industry 4.0 is kind of fourth industrial revolution, which bring intelligence and life to the, all the objects, which you see earlier. Now, along with the robotics and the intelligence, can perform augment the intelligence like a, you. As I show in the, you know, the prognostic health monitoring of the machines. Now the machines, let's say in this building, there is a fresh air coming to the building, where there's a blow air and the blower connected to the motor, the motor will you know, push this air inside the building. 
right? And these motors are very, very important in order to take care of your comfort. These motors sometimes they become a you know issue with the operations and the maintenance and all those things. We call the predictive maintenance and preventive maintenance. In the preventive maintenance, irrespective of your health, you go to hospital for the routine checkup. Similarly, in the machines and the pumps right. and all, so they need to do preventive maintenance. Okay. So this will incur more operating cost and more manual, uh, you know, ma maintenance to minimize all this operating expenditure, prolong the equipment uh, life. How we, when you go to the hospital when the doctor do the ECG, based on the ECG report, the doctor will tell what the condition of the person in real time. Similarly here, when you see the vibration signature of the machine and the turbines, we are able to tell how soon the machine is going to be fail and how you as a operating maintenance um, staff, how they can take care of this asset well in advance. They can minimize the downtime. So that is one of the most important aspect in the operation and maintenance okay. sector. So we talked about a smartphone, the impact on for consumers. Yes. Uh, you took you used the, the example of smartphones, yeah. and now uh, for I guess uh, manufacturing companies, mm -hmm. for corporates, you use the example mm -hmm. of. Uh, Predictive maintenance. maintenance yeah, condition yes. maintenance, yeah. So if I may uh, bring up another example, which uh, you spoke uh, earlier about as well, which is uh, driverless cars, right? Yeah, autonomous then, driving. Right. Yeah. So for many people, for many audience, when they talk driverless autonomous uh, mm. driving, they think about all the safety concerns. Yeah. And so tell us how, um, you know, you guys try to address that challenge. Yes. Uh, I wrote an article in one of the journal. Will the... Uh, driverless car steering mm. can you trust the confidence from the co-passenger right yeah. you are co-passenger right will you trust the steering that's right mm. but uh, how to gain the confidence level which a very list of you know parameters which we may not satisfy mm. because uh, the technology has its own limit mm -hmm. so only so then uh, we develop the autonomous uh, driving capability we call it a near human vision system near human vision system Okay. Which means it's a it's a kind of uh, autonomous uh, mobility, autonomous systems. How you drive your vehicle based on surrounding environment you map and able to move your vehicle. That's right. Right. We have a uh, lidar, a radar, and also stereo cameras and also IMU sensors in the vehicle, and uh, all this information put together per second, 4 GB to 48 GB data coming, mm -hmm. and uh, this data coming from very different sources. So how we are going to fuse this data? That's the biggest challenge. So we, before going to fuse the data, we need to calibrate this data. Calibration is all about extrinsic calibration, intrinsic calibration, do the data cleaning, and you know, the uh, <coughs> we call as a data normalization, and then we go to the fusion. Fusion means how you are going to fuse the data. You fuse only the radar data, you fuse only the LiDAR data, you fuse only the stereo camera data, which is a video, and also the IMU sensors, which is a time series data. These are multiple unstructured uh, different format data. Then we do the fusing at various level. The fusion happens in various category, like a set of association, set of uh, features level, set of estimations, like this. So then we perform the, the fusion at various category. Once we're done, then we go for the decision. Right? What decisions we need to take when the vehicle is moving, when the vehicle need to distinguish the object when it is moving, data in motion, dynamic. So the decisions happens to be in the microsecond. So this will be run through the you know, advanced AI algorithms. These, guys, these algorithms is carefully designed to receive the data and able to train and achieve the highest accuracy, which is 90% or 92%, 98% based on the scenarios both the day and night conditions and also when the vehicle is moving there is a tree on the road and then the tree shadow also one of the object so we are facing this kind of issues so this will help us to improve the the distinguishing the object in the mixed traffic let's say in singapore the traffic rules are very strict you cannot cross the road countries like india and other countries you are we are driving the car here suddenly someone come in the back suddenly someone come in the front so how you are going to manage this kind of kiosk in uh, mixed traffic signal where the rules are very very you know uh, not so mature enough to for, you know, follow the regulations like Singapore. So we are addressing this kind of concern to gain the confidence from the co-passengers.
so we are uh, very much uh, satisfied and succeeded to gain the confidence from the co passenger uh, giving that uh, the vehicle is uh, you know moving in a collision free environment in a given condition so uh, i guess uh, you need a lot of data set to mm. actually uh, arrive at this uh, 90 or 92 yes. or 95% yeah. safety and uh, yeah i'll tell you the why we need uh, rich data sets to train model if you have a AI algorithms, if you have AI algorithms like a doctor in the hospital, doctor, doctor must be well experienced uh, only when he gets the variety of problems from the patient. He can expose to the, all these uh, problems of the person. Similarly here, in the machine what we have done is uh, for monitoring the health condition of these motors and machines and all, we are getting only one records per hour, right? But 12 hours the op machine is operating here. Only 12 hours you are getting, means 12 records. Per month, 300 records. Per annum, only 3,000 records. In 3,000 records, you cannot uh, train your AI model. And your AI model cannot achieve the highest accuracy. So what we need is, we need more data sets. That's why Google and uh, NVIDIA and uh, Apple company and uh, this uh, <coughs> Facebook and all, they say we have a rich data sets. So we create the data sets uh, through the artificially, we call the synthetic data approach. Synthetically, we create the data sets of 50,000 of the similar vector of the machine data. So once you have a 50,000 data sets, your model will keep on uh, no, uh, training and able to achieve the highest accuracy. Right, okay, that's interesting. So uh, you actually create synthetic uh, synthetic data. data. Oh, we call the synthetic approach, and the data we talk about now they comes under a lot of uh, no the regulatory scanners. Mm. You need to meet the General Data Protection Regulatory Act mm. in Singapore, uh, Privacy Data Protection Act. Mm. So many acts. When you create a data synthetically means artificially, you don't have to bother about this. Uh, you know uh, the. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, because there's no person person involved, uh, really. Uh, is there? there is no <laughs> well, data machine. come from in, you know uh, right. yeah. physical source or something. Right. The synthetically means you almost you know come out from all this, right? Which is 100% mm. uh, accepting. Okay. So that's how we creating the data sets and able to you know train my model and able to run it. Oh right, okay. Oh, yeah. And also, let's say how you are going to train the models how my AI model can uh, say this machine has a problem. So when we get the data from the machines, right, this data is going to be clean and able to, you know, normalize. Once they normalize, when you go to hospital, you, they will not allow directly go to the doctor. First, you need to go to reception. Then they will ask what is your problem. Then they see the your uh, oxygen level and your temperature level. If these two are normal, they say you are okay, you sit. If these are in the border, then they immediately they go to the emergency or uh, attend the doctor. The same thing we do here. When we receive the machine data, we do the you know normalization and then we see anomalies. Okay, percentage of anomaly in the data means unstructured data and uh, you know uh, specific features in the data. Then the anomaly percentage is more than 70 percent. It's a good candidate for further analysis. Then we have a APIs. APIs will see, oh, this is 70% anomaly. Then immediately it will invoke detection algorithm, fault detection algorithm. So fault detection algorithm says, so this uh, data is this anomaly and could be the faults will be other belt condition, bearing condition, mechanical imbalance and all. Then it will list possible faults. Then it will invoke the classification algorithm. This classifying algorithm will come and say, this is the exactly the fault of the motor, the bearing condition. Or oh, right. Like in hospital, first okay, reception, okay. which is anomaly detection. Yeah. Second, physician, which will diagnose normally. Okay. And the physician will uh, refer to the right, specialist. Right, right, right. Here also the same sequence. Right, 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 yeah. right. So that's how you cleanse the data. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Right. And then what we do is, uh, let's say, <coughs> You talk about you talk about the scalability, edge computing, mm. and all the things, right? You you let's say you have a small company of uh, five machines mm. in your uh, manufacturing or operation, so you cannot uh, affordable for the cloud all the time, which is very expensive. You cannot take the load all the time to the cloud. You use APIs, I 
uh, APIs and uh, there is a gateways now. Gateways are equally good uh, as compared to earlier. These gateways are get the data from these machines and able to locally compute what is the issues. If you are more informed decision, then you can take to the cloud. Yes, yeah. And these g g g gateways are good enough to connect close to 65,000 machines at a time in the given area. Wow. Okay. We call it the order of n square. We say our star topology, mesh topology, bus topology. In the bus topology, I can connect only to you. In the mesh topology, I can connect across all people. Right, right. One to many. Mm -hmm. One to one, one to many. So these are the technologies enabling us to make it more you know, uh, pervasive to connect all the devices. Okay, so we just talked about the phone, we talked about a manufacturing scenario, mm -hmm. we just talked about... And uh, pharmaceutical, now the problem is, uh, let's say this is a medicine, you assume that uh, this tablet will get $2,000, yeah. right? When the medicine is very expensive, the forfeiting will be higher, mm -hmm. right? People will duplicate. Now the question is, how you are going to secure your uh, proprietary, you know, uh, material from these people? Right? Let's say you are a pharmacist, I will come and buy uh, medicine from, from your pharmacy shop. But if the medicine is, if I identify if the medicine is duplicate, then I am going to sue the company, not you. So where we you know, did, uh, protect and privatize this information through the technology called blockchain. All oh, right. Yeah. Of course. Okay. That's a diff another separate topic. Oh. Um, yeah. I'm afraid that we are running out of time. Okay. Uh, let me just yeah. check. So yes, I know that you have tons of information and knowledge that you we can talk about, and um, I'm afraid that we are coming to the end of the podcast, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. See you sometime, and uh, you can come to our office. You can experience all the solution, not mm. by just uh, seeing. You can exp live experience. Is it open to public or yes, just? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is open to public. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. thank you so much thank for you. your time.